Back you know? when more of our friends still went to Otakon, we used to, uh, the staffers and our non-staffer friends, we'd all get one giant suite at a hotel about a mile north of the BCC. Mm. And what we uh, Otakon would do is, since we weren't using a room, they would comp us like a certain rate, so that all kind of nice. worked out. Uh, but, you know, we weren't that far from the BCC, so it wasn't, it wasn't yeah. all that crazy, but it was like, man, you're going to encounter some real <laughs> characters in your way back up there. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, but, yeah. yeah. It'll be, I'm very excited for it. I think, you know, I think, you know, given that, you know, it's an all-volunteer uh, mm -hmm. staff and you know, everything's always all crazy and new for the first mm -hmm. time, I think we're going to have some interesting incidents, but I think for the most part, it's going to be a huge improvement. I think people are going to really appreciate having more space to breathe and all that stuff. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, are, are there particular AMVs that stick out for you, that you, particular styles of AMVs that you like? Oh, I'm always about the upbeat videos. Nice. Uh, I don't know what it is, but upbeat video is definitely my category. I mean, mm. I could, you know, I won't because we'll be here forever. I can open my <laughs> AMB folder and start rattling stuff off. But I mean, you know, the classics like Under Ice uh, mm. by uh, Aqu uh, Aqu Aquiline Studios. Mm. Uh, you know, stuff this year that uh, the one that won Best in Show, um, mm. the the beat will continue until morale improves. I thought that was excellent, <laughs> and it was a classic upbeat video. And that if you kind of pay attention. It doesn't really make any sense, mm. but man, is it fun! <laughs> uh, I'm also a big fan of like the really technical videos that mm. are still are managed to be fun, like Tainted Donuts, mm -hmm. which is that one which I don't know if you're familiar, but uh, it came out in like 2003, 2004, mm. and to give you an idea, I hadn't seen Bebop or Trigun yet, and I didn't realize that they were two different shows wow, because yeah. they combined the show so effectively wow. that you just believed it because they just did mm. all this masking, which at the time was completely crazy. Mm -hmm. And in the whole the whole plot of the AMV, which is amazing, this kind of plot is um, you know the crew uh, gets uh, a bounty and it's Vash and they got to go after, <laughs> after him and the whole AMV is like the whole crew trying to chase down Vash and it's an excellent, excellent AMV if you haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, I'm also a really big fan, despite having uh, concerns about it in the contest. I love AMV Hell. You know, mm. I, you oh, yeah. know, I've got a clip in AMV Hell Five, which is like, you know, nice. I'm way more proud of it than it deserves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, me and my friends have probably seen, you know, at least three, four, and five mm. dozens of times. Like at this point, when we watch three or four. We have our own like Rocky Horror esque thing going. Wow. We, kept making this, we just kept making the same jokes at the same videos, so now we just do it on purpose. And it's like the same exact jokes, the same punchline, at the same time every time we watch it. And wow. It, 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 it just kind of grew out of control. But yeah, so upbeat definitely my category. Uh, and I'm also, you know, people always kind of razz on the romance category, but I think there's a lot of really good, solid stuff in there, mm. romance sentimental videos. You, mm. you know, I think it's always the most surprising video because people have really low expect uh, category. Mm. People have low mm. expectations, and, you know, you end up with really solid stuff in there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and the interesting thing about romance, too, I think, is that um, so much of anime is so sentimental on some level um, that it's interesting seeing a, uh, an AMV that can really pull out the sentimentality in a show and just kind of foreground it. Uh, in a way that just really makes you realize, oh yeah, they were, you know, um, there was a lot about that character in that show that I didn't really realize because it was kind of, you know, going by in the background. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I also am a big fan of the ones that are kind of unexpected sentimental mm. videos. Like there was one with uh, uh, Sakaki and Azumanga Daya with that cat mm. that she oh. found on the island. Oh, I and love it was that just part. incredible video that was yeah. just kind of like, wow, like this kind of came out of nowhere. And I think the crowd Chomp. was a little stunned. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that one, the nice cat. The, the, the yeah, nice the, cat. The, yeah. the, the um, rare tiger cat, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Was, that was great. So, yeah. They, that's the fun thing about it is Tama. that you know every year you've got your good stuff you got your mm. incredible like i won't name names but oh my god some of these videos like i'm always like yes like i'm so glad you competed and i'm so glad you're proud of this but like some of these videos it's just like wow and then you've got you know like, always like the memorable incredible videos and so it's just you never know what you're gonna get every year and i always super look forward to seeing what we're gonna get and you know immediately you know you know Rating the FTP to get as many of these videos as I can <laughs> before Vic throws it into the vault. <laughs> nice, yeah. very cool. Well, I'm curious now. Formula One, how yeah. did you get into that? Tell 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 us a little bit about that. Mm. This was really unexpected, and all my friends I think thought I'd grown a brain tumor or something because I started <laughs> all of a sudden getting really into racing. It's just mm. like, um, so I don't know if you guys know the Giant Bomb podcast, uh, mm -mm. this uh, video game podcast. Um, listening to it since like 2008 um and it's kind of gotten it's one of these things where like you know you listen to four or five guys that long you get you know mm. it's like you know these guys and one of them i kind of related to he was into like the same kind of weird simulation type video games that mm. i was into 
Um, and he had this a couple times kind of tangentially mentioned Formula One. And I was like, isn't that those like you know, thinking like NASCAR and stuff like that? Um, and then what happened was someone else in the office, uh, it was in GameSpot, but they're in the same office, joined mm. who was from Ireland, and F1's a lot bigger in Europe, and they decided to do a podcast called Alt F1, which is a premium podcast on Giant Bomb, so there's a little mm. plug for those guys, I guess. Um, and I was like, you know what? They kept talking about why they're excited about it. I'm like, all right, I'll give this a mm. shot. So I listened to the first episode, and I was like, huh, this sounds okay. So I go mm. get a race, you know, I acquire a video of a race, mm-hmm. and I watch the race, and I'm like, huh. This is interesting. Mm. And all of a sudden, I find I'm watching more races and I'm getting, you know, all of a sudden, I'm like super deep in. And people are like, you know, I'm talking about, yeah, you know, I think Ricardo's got some real qualities this season. I think he's really got a chance to beat Williams. And like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And, you know, for me, part of it is like, I really, really love, you know, the driver personalities are really big. Like, I really love mm. Daniel Ricardo. I think he's a cool guy. Uh, the variety of the circuits and mm. uh, destinations and all that, the change the differences between the teams like you know it's not like you know it, it's, it's funny they've kind of got this baked in inequality in that like you know some teams are better and they just mm. are and they've got more money to do better stuff and so you you know for instance mercedes is completely crushing it because they mm. put all this money into better engines and it's going to be a couple of years so everyone else catches up and some people don't like that like for instance nascar is all about they mm. all have the exact same car they drive in a circle because it's as close to going a straight line as you can get so the only thing left is driver skill it's like no 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 i like mm. that in f1 you have to have the best engineers and the best drivers and if you don't have both you got nothing the so whole like, package mm. yeah like so like fernando alonso is arguably the best driver on the grid right now but mm. he's got a real bum car so he's mm. not doing very good mm. and meanwhile you know uh, you've got hamilton who's a world-class driver in a world-class car and he's completely crushing it nonstop mm. so yeah i mean i just really love getting into the engineering and you know waking up at crazy times like the japanese grand prix you're gonna wake <laughs> up and watch it two in the morning that's really really weird uh and yeah it's just incredible and the other thing two things that really got me into it since i was already well on my way was i saw the movie rush uh the ron mm. howard film which is completely incredible and mm. the documentary senna which was about mm. uh, ayrton senna who is you know probably the, one of the leading you know three-time world champion super famous name who was killed in a race mm. and until you know very recently actually uh he was the last driver to be killed in a race and sadly wow. uh jules bianchi who was mm. in a crash in the Japanese Grand Prix last year and then in a coma ever since finally, you know, succumbed mm. about a month ago to his injuries. Mm. But yeah, I mean, both of those things really, really, those movies make a fan out of you for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Wow. So, so, so you've gone as far as uh, rigging out a chair and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I, not only that, so I had a folding chair and I was like, I can't buy a sim racing cockpit. This is crazy. I don't have room in New York and I can't spend this much money. It's just going to be a passing hobby. But, you know, I've got like 150 hours on the clock on Assetto Corsa, and I'm doing an Extra Life fundraiser where I'm doing, you know, every, mm. every dollar I get, I get a, I'll do a lap on the track. And nice. I've got this crazy custom wheel. It's like, yeah, you know what? And you know, I bought like a nice chair for it. And, yeah, I don't know. I just, it's, I like that it demands perfection. It's not like, mm. you know, it's not like grinding. Like, it's not like some games where you can just grind and your character gets better. It's like, no, mm. you as a person have to get better. Interesting. And there's no ceiling. Like, I put a lot of effort into this, and I can, you know, outrace. You know, I was just on the go kart track this weekend and mm. outracing my friends. But I'm like 19th place in my racing league, which is, <laughs> I'm sure, you know, they're, you know, mm. not so great compared to other people. So it's just kind of like, there's no ceiling for the skill level, and it's just kind of a fun thing to get into. And this, you know, so much stuff to tweak and learn and all that, with all the different cars and tracks. Uh, so but I still so hate driving day to day. <laughs> it's amazing, so many different variables that you you can work on from. from Oh, different yeah. aspects <laughs> like to give you an idea of how crazy the simulator is like mm. if you want to change your psi in one tire for some reason you could do that wow you, know, you want to change the angle of the wing you can do that mm. uh you know you know how many millimeters off the ground your car is like all, millimeters all stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah and it makes a difference and like i never mm. would have believed it but you start tweaking it. it's like oh yeah i can feel it i'm going around this corner a lot tighter and it's like all these little tiny tweaks i'm like oh man i am going down quite a rabbit hole here <laughs> <laughs> the whole engineering and design and and all the physics yeah. behind it. Yeah. 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 And also, like, the whole metagame in F1 as well, because they have, like, you know, the whole problem is they want to be on the cutting edge of you know, mm. racing technology, but they also need teams to be in it. So they can't just let them be unleashed because then you'd only have mm. four teams with all the money. Yeah. So, like, they're trying to restrict it so that the lower teams have some kind of chance and they can make it with the, you know, the lowly sum of, like, $200 million a year and stay <laughs> in the game, you know, because then you've got people like Mercedes mm. who, you know, probably putting in like you know 400 500 million dollars mm. it's it's incredible so yeah i don't know everything about it really gets me and especially i always go out of way my way to watch them live just that much cooler to be like you know 
it's 1 p.m. where they are, but you know, here, you know, I'm watching it at five in the morning. Apparently, <laughs> it's amazing how much that changes over time. I remember reading that uh, um, the Olympic Committee keeps change, keeps outlawing javelins, cool. um, different kinds of javelins, oh, because yes. they got s- so good that they would, you know, in danger of spearing people who are on the other <laughs> side of the, you know, the the, the competition area. Yeah, um, yeah. And so it's just, you know, uh, people gotten that good, and the people building the javelins have gotten that good. Um, and so you know, we kind of have to keep pulling ourselves back to, to yeah. actually make it a, a, a sport. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I, I was just talking to my uncle about this this weekend. He was shocked to learn that Formula One cars don't have anti-lock brakes. I was like, why don't they do that? And it's like, because that makes it easier, and they want it to be a challenge. You've got to worry about locking up your brakes because you're going to get a flat spot in your tire, and then the next time you lock up, it's going to go back to that same flat spot, and all of a sudden, you can't see straight because you're vibrating so fast. <laughs> it's crazy. So, like, they, you know, they... I really love the kind of arms race and technology in this. Mm. You see a new feature comes out, come out, like when they first started doing wings, and mm. it's like either they're going to ban it or everyone's going to have it the next time. <laughs> so it's really funny seeing how a lot of stuff works out. Have, have you seen the, the drone pod racing? I've seen some of that. And yeah. It's like, to be honest, I'm a little bit like, a little bit avoiding it because like I can't, that seems like an expensive hobby that oh, I want to do. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it's crazy because you know, these guys will actually put on goggles that yeah. are attached to to the thing, and you know, race these quadcopters around, and just you know, the the, um, the reaction time you need when you're racing at you know scale several hundred miles an hour, yeah, um, yeah. it's just, just insane. Yeah, I've been interested in drone stuff for a while. In fact, you mm. wouldn't be able to see it, but I actually got you know, I'm saying I got bit by a drone a few months ago. Oh where, no! Uh, a friend of mine's got some pretty big, intense drones, mm. and I was tr- playing playing around with them, and I made the super rookie mistake of it was on the ground, and I bent over to pick it <laughs> oh, up. Oh yeah. And I did not safe the vehicle first. Mm-hmm. So as I leaned down and picked it up, my as I bent over, my stomach bumped the throttle. And all of a sudden, I'm like, ow, 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 what's mm-hmm. happening? And I let go. The thing flies away. I kill the throttle. And, you know, it ended up being fine. I didn't even need stitches or anything. But it's like mm-hmm. this blood splatter on the controller. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, oh, man, I picked it up now. Oh. Uh, and what's hilarious is my friend who I was there with, he shows me his thumb. He's got a scar from the exact same injury. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, my man, goodness. Why are we idiots? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was that was fun. I just got lucky because he's got, a, like, a, a more powerful one with, like, carbon fiber blades. Whoa. Yeah, that would have that would have been the end of my day. Slice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That stuff is incredible. And because, like I mentioned before, like, looking into uh, the software, like, mm. you know, it's kind of like, Working with drones is kind of like the closest you can get to working on spacecraft as an amateur, you know, mm-hmm. uh, without you know spending all the money like send up your own cube satchel and crazy. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen uh, Space Farmer? Space Farmer? No. What is yeah, that? Yeah, it's um uh, uh I think Billy Bob Thornton's in it and mm. oh the astronaut farmer the astronaut oh, farmer sorry okay. that's the one that's the one astronaut farmer <laughs> yes, <laughs> I should get my that, title right. <laughs> yeah, that was that was so obviously <laughs> ridiculous but mm. also amazing. Dude builds an Atlas rocket in his like. Sh- grain silo <laughs> he, he's, he's got a ranch and uh that's his dream hey, yeah yeah there we yeah. go that was, that was a great movie of, was, of course nasa has things. all the money he, he's yeah. just a farmer and he's putting everything he's got into it the house uh, is mortgaged and everything and he's got his dream and trying to keep it alive and it's kind of like when uh, elon musk started saying mm. he's going to launch a vehicle company all his friends got together and like no, you, we had like an intervention like you can't do this like, you'll lose all your money like look at all these rockets blowing up like, i think i got it mm-hmm. he came he came pretty close but he oh, pulled yeah. it off like he came pretty close to scraping out the bottom of the barrel there mm-hmm. that's that whole story that's another podcast <laughs> it, it's yeah. yeah now i'm curious with with the drones i heard that uh, there was uh, a meeting of several tech companies to try and come up with some sort of a traffic control similar to the, what we use for hmm. airplanes have you guys heard anything about this no so i've heard some vague stuff about this like i know there have been proposals for like um having certain altitudes blocked off like sure. for instance reserving two like so you don't want anything higher than 400 feet because they can interfere mm. with normal airplanes mm. so they're talking about reserving 200 to 400 feet for like fast drone travel and then yep. 200 feet and below for like deliveries and what's fascinating about this is the FAA is moving pretty quick for a government agency, but mm. not quick enough for these companies. <laughs> so they're kind of taking it into their own hands. And what it kind of struck me, I found myself thinking like, yeah, you know, rock on. You know, they're going to write the right regulation and tell the government mm. how to do it. And I kind of like checked myself and I was like, wait a minute, this is kind of how the banks got going. So like, mm. it's a little yeah. conflicting because it's like, mm. on one side, I want this to get going and I believe mm. these companies know what they're doing and I don't think, you know, the FAA necessarily has all the expertise they need mm. to, to make a right judgment on this. Yeah. But at the same time, it's a little scary to think about where that could lead, lead you if, you know, 
you know, if they even even a little, you know, conflict of interest, which they will, you know, mm. what consequences will that have 15 years down the road that we're not thinking yeah. about now? Yeah, it's almost well, like the Wild West with the spectrum before mm. the spectrum was all carved up. Uh, uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. allocated. Mm. Now we have space that's being carved up and mm. hasn't been completely allocated yet. But yeah, yeah. It, well, it's, it's, it's going to be really exciting to see where that stuff goes. Well, and you already have stuff like what happened with the wildfires. Uh, what a month oh or two God. ago. Yeah. Um, These idiots. Oh, what are they? Doing? I, know. <laughs> I heard on the radio this morning that like yeah. some drone was hanging out near. Um, I think it was Kennedy, and like the, some pilots mm. saw it, and it wasn't really interfering but mm. they can see it at like 2,000 mm. feet it's like you guys are going to kill it for the hobby what yeah. are you doing yeah. yeah and you know it, it's going to force a kill switch for you know all drones which is then going to kill the hobby you yeah. know I was like ugh yeah it's it's going to be uh, I don't know I don't know what they're going to do with that stuff it's going to be challenging I think it's all going to work out because I think drones are mm-hmm. too useful like yeah. I think a lot of people think of just like predator drones and stuff like that <laughs> like, right, you know, that's that's a whole thing on its own but like you're going to have stuff like you know when you could have drones that automatically charge themselves and go out and monitor traffic patterns and crop mm. uh, cra- crop patterns mm. and like it's basically like having ultra high resolution dedicated satellites on the cheap you're going to yeah. have yeah. all this incredible data that no one really thought of like how about like a cross section of uh air quality from one to a thousand feet you know you mm. can have that all of a sudden you can wow. get all this cool data yeah that never even thought about not that practical <laughs> no, yeah there's a lot of stuff out there that's just like data that's just ready to get collected by you know mm. or even just like you know stuff like you know you can have specialized crop dusting where you know yeah. it, when when the computer does it all for you who cares if it has to do a different thing for every 20 feet it'll figure it out mm. analysis is, is spot focused Crop yeah. dusting. Oh, I have trouble with these here, but not over on that hill. I don't need to cover yeah, everything. For, I need to cover where the problem is. For sure. And, you know, and then you got people, you know, even people who don't care about the stuff at all. Like, you know, you want to talk about, like, you know, reducing pesticides and stuff like that. Mm. Well, if you can track where the bugs are and be targeted, you know, you can reduce your usage of that stuff. So I think it's going to be great. You know, did, bring on the drones. <laughs> did, did you see the, um, three, the, the rubble clearing 3D printing drones? No. This was amazing. So the the idea was that they they would mount these basically 3D printer extruders on the bottom of drones hooked up to software so that they could basically um, send them out um, and and map um, uh, an area that has rubble in it to basically clear away that rubble. The the extruders extrude foam that hardens onto pieces of rubble. So a drone can go over, extrude, um, lock itself onto a piece of rubble, and then clear that away. And the idea is when you have that... Clearing away rubble becomes entirely a software problem. It is just yeah. identifying the rocks and t- figuring out where it all goes. And then the drones just keep on doing this, and then they recharge themselves, and you just sort of walk away and let them take care of any size pile of rubble. So they're using foam as like a grappling mechanism. Yes, exactly. And it, it, it's some specific thing that they've um, uh, uh, you know specifically de- uh, designed for that material. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah, I yeah. think there's going to be a lot of stuff like that that no one's really thinking about. I think it's going to be mm. super disruptive, too. Just like yeah. how, you know, when these self-driving cars show up in 10 years, you know, like, mm. I always kind of looked at, like, truck drivers and taxi drivers. Like, do you guys know your job? Your, mm. your job, you don't have a job. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's, in, in fact, I, I have a friend who, who drives taxi, and he's continually saying, look, this is absolutely <laughs> killing our industry. I can't make yeah. money anymore. Yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. like, that super sucks for those guys, but, mm. you know, no one's going to, you know feel bad for the horse and buggy driver you know you yeah, got yeah. we got to move on and we got to figure out what to do with those people yeah. and mm. you know that's going to be a super challenge but you know at the same time i think it's going to benefit everyone more so yeah. in the long run so yeah mm-hmm. it's technology stuff you know you never know what yeah. gonna, it's going to be great <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah you, you got to stay ahead of it there, there's no other way i yeah. think the next 10 years are all going to be about automated uh vehicles and vr mm. like those two things mm. are going to be like you know the inter- like what the internet was to like the 2000 like 20 mm. 2000, 2010 i think that's I guess we're already halfway through this one. But yeah, 2015 <laughs> to 2025, mm. that's going to be, all that stuff's going to be crazy. Yeah. yeah I have an a- Oculus Rift around here somewhere. Nice. Oh, wow. Nice. Hey. Nice. <laughs> oh, my, let me tell you, racing in the D, uh, oh, I borrowed yeah. DK2, and it's amazing. Like, mm-hmm. I got so into it that I, you know, no joke, spun out and braced for impact at one point. <laughs> yep. like, oh, no, wait, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's good. I mean, that, that's yeah, the yeah. experience it should provide. And that's what, you know. That was with the DK2, which is like mm. you know the you know crappy little prototype. So when mm. that stuff comes out, you know, let's say I'll be buying some mm. stock in VR stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe getting a little bit of um, uh, motion sickness medicine as well. Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah. So uh, the only one game really gave that to me mm. bad, and that was with the DK1, which didn't have oh. lateral tracking, so that'll really mess you up. 
Yeah. Uh, but I did buy Dramamine with it just in case. I <laughs> that one time. I think, like, I've used uh, the almost the latest stuff. I used Cres mm. Crescent Cove, and it's like, no, no one's going to have a problem with this stuff. Or Crescent yeah. Bay, rather. Mm. It's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. And you get used to it, too. I mean, it, you know, like anything else. For sure. Uh, like, basically, once you're, it's all about your brain understanding, oh, okay, these signals are normal because mm. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I guess this is fine. <laughs> Yeah, I demoed the Oculus Rift at a nearby gaming convention, and um, uh, you know, watching people like the first time they fell off a cliff, yeah, was just you know, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know? I like so I like to put people. I put like you know, like my my aunt into the sim mm. racer because the thing is, uh. it seems kind of crazy for us to put people behind the wheel of like a GT3 car. But mm. get this: so when you're, you're sitting down and your character's sitting down. You're holding a steering wheel, and your character's uh, holding a steering wheel, yeah. and you're pressing pedals. It's all very natural. It feels mm -hmm. right. And so it's kind of a really great intro thing. Yeah. And then, of course, everyone kind of forgets they're driving a race car, and they drive, you know, 100 miles an hour, and they just kind of turn and go flying mm -hmm. into the wall, and then you know, <laughs> people freak out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cool. Well, I think we better um, uh, finish up. Um, we'll, uh, thanks so much for being on here. Um, what do you want to plug? Oh, I don't know. Uh, you know what? I'm going to plug my Extra Life, um, my uh, nice. fundraiser for that. Let me get yeah. that um, up here. Yeah. So if you go to, um, so I guess also since you mentioned it, my Twitter is just y at Yatpay, Y-I-T-P-A-Y. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing super interesting there, but if you like space stuff, you'll probably see a lot of stuff retweeted. Cool. But um, my uh, Extra Life is, ex so it's uh, www.extra-life.org slash participant slash jp burke that's J P B U R K E. so every dollar i get i'm going to be doing one lap which depending on the track is anywhere from two to three or up to nine minutes if i choose the crazy track so you nice. know, if you want to you know put some good money towards uh, some money towards a good cause like the uh you know Bo uh, boston children's hospital you know it seems like a plug worthy thing and Absolutely. Not, see you on twitter i guess <laughs> yeah Awesome. Excellent. And come to Otakon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, submit more AMVs. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> cool. Thanks so much. Thank Appreciate you for joining you. us. Yeah. Thank you.